So uh, uh, first of all, it's a great pleasure to be here, and uh, I must say I was influenced by Maxim on m m many times during my life. And what I will be talking about today is actually a joint work in progress with Maxim and Jan Soibelman. So let me start with writing the title, and then somehow uh, getting myself out of trouble with the title. Uh, algebra of the infrared and secondary polytops. Secondary so and this joint to work with Maxim and the answer. So first of all, uh, it may be a little un unusual for mathematicians the term algebra of the infrared. It was borrowed from the title of the work uh, of Gayota, Moore, and Witten uh, of, of this, this title. So I will not start with this. I'll just say that it's come. The ter term comes from. from this work. We, uh, I'll explain a little bit later. And uh, no, now let me do like the most elementary lo logical exposition, which will start with secondary polytops and their properties. And then it uh, turns out that some of the properties are relevant for this physical uh, point of view. So let me start maybe here, call, call it a reminder on secondary polytops. Would be probably part one. Secondary polytops. So this was this is a concept that was introduced in my joint work with Gelfand and Zelewinski way back in the nineties. with the goal of studying discriminants of polynomials and many variables. So I recall the context, and then I recall the main setting, and recall uh, what was the old point of view on this setting, and what somehow is the new source of examples for this setting. So we start with a finite set of points in Euclidean space. Uh, So in the old setting, it was really a point. Uh, uh, the set consisted of points with integer coordinates. Is the set of monomials. We interpret as integer point as a Laran monomial. Laran monomial. And then we consider the space of polynomials over those monomials and look for, the sing for those polynomials that define singular algebraic hypersurfaces. But uh, th this construction makes sense for any subset of uh, points in Euclidean space, integer, integer or not. Uh, so we Im imagine something like this. So a bunch of points will take their convex hull. Then some of the points are inside the convex hull. Some points are vertices of the convex hull. Let's call it Q. It's a convex hull of A. Some uh, convex polytop. And we're looking at triangulations of this polytop into simplices with vertices in A. Something like this. Something maybe like this. And maybe there are some other points of A which are not being used in the, in the triangulations, in the triangulation. So let me move it up. I'll just say right here. We consider the totality of oh, okay, all right. Triangulations. 
triangulations, we've called them T of Q into straight simplices with vertices in A. Now inside this set, it's a finite set because we fixed the, the finite set of possible vertices. Inside, there are so-called regular triangulations. As those which possess a piecewise convex function with respect to this triangulation, which is actually strictly convex in the sense that actually breaks down on every intermediate uh, face, regular triangulations. Does exist strictly convex T piecewise linear function. But you allow it to be constant on one face, right? Yes, it may be constant, it might be linear, so, so yes. It, it, mm. So, and the secondary polytope is a polytope in the space, or let me write it here. Uh, so sigma of A, this is the secondary polytope. Uh, it, it, it lies in the space of functions on A, which means R to the A. Uh, it's a polytope, again convex, of dimension equals cardinality of A minus D minus 1, whose vertices are in bijection with this type of triangulations. It's in general, it is a strict inclusion. So vertices. I call them, I say phi t, phi t called regular triangulations. So it's not a definition, it, it, it's, a, it's, it's a reminder, yes. So, so, so it, it can be, so, so th this is a certain particular function. So, so this is a function from A to uh, R, I can write it. Phi t is a function from A to R and phi t of a point w is the sum of the volumes of the simplices of, of, of the star of the point w in the triangulation. Equals volume of star of w. That's the, that's the definition, and the theorem is that all those points are actually vertices of some, con, of some convex polytope, which a priori, they, it's not clear why they are. Just a second. Can yes. one measure volume, not respect to Euclidean measure, but some kind of non-constant density? It's possible, but uh, this has not been studied. In particular, it's an interesting direction is the hyperbolic case, in which case it's very c c c close it's, uh, to the Penner's, con Penner's construction of uh, triangulation. You define this convex set by the function, so because you have the same notation for function and for convex set. I'm confused. No, so it's a function on the finite set. So it's A is a finite set. So we consider a function, so you can Euclidean on space of dimension equal to the cardinality of A. So you define the convex function convex set. No, no, it's, I define the vector, a vector. It's a vertices of polyhedra, five sub No, no, vertices of, of uh, sigma of A. Elements of functions on A. Yes, so, so the polytope is in the space of functions on A. Okay. So it's, each vertex is an individual function on A. To each triangulation, we can as associate an individual function, which to every point uh, associates the volume of the star of this point. Actually, it's, it's a mysterious definition. It is mysterious, yes. <laughs> yes, so, so I, I, I'll say a little more so in, in the reminder. So a, a, an example of this, and Again, but it's, the object is a polytope, right? The object is a polytope, yes. But you define, fun yeah, no, you define function, I'm concerned. I, I define a, 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 what will be a vertex of the polytope. Uh, I define vertex of polytope. Individual vertex is individual of this thing. So all together, they form the set of vertices. You see that all these functions will point to all All, yes, to all, all triangulations. All triangulations, all triangulations yes. Yes. So you find this set, and then you say convex, convex. Uh, uh, yes. But you don't know a priori it's convex or not? A priori, a, a priori it, 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 it's a theorem that all those points exact are in the convex position. Uh -huh. okay. It's a theorem. Okay. So consider an example. Suppose A itself is a set in the plane. So D equals to. And this is, is in convex position. 
well, in A itself in the convex position. It means it's something like this. So all the points are here, right? We label them, say, 0, 1, 2, n, right? Then a triangulation is the same as a bracketing of symbols. So if, I, for instance, I write here, say, a 1, I write a 2, here I write a n, so here I write some bracketing. Of this will write a 1, a 2. For instance, this is 3, so it would be, this is 4, so this would be uh, a 3, a 4. This would be the bracketing like this. 3, 4, and, and, and so on. So, so here would be bracketing. So in this case, sigma of A is the so-called Stashev polytope, or Asashahedron. So vertices are bracketings of A1, A. And this, those polytops are, of course, uh, very classical, very well known. And what's important, let's call it polytop K n plus 1, uh, Kn, that they form an operand, which means every face of asociohedron is a product of other asociohedra. Uh, let me write it here. Can you see why this dimension, why this dimension, why it's a low dimension? Uh, because, so this, this is the space, uh, uh, this corresponds for global affine linear functions. Now maybe I just explain something to me without formulas. You consider uh, uh, functions on set A, all, all real functions, and you get kind of low yes. convex hull. Mm -hmm. yes, yes. And because they give different uh, piecewise symmetric position, you get on space of linear function, you get some fan, it kind of dual polytope to this fan. Yes. Mm -hmm. That's it. Yes, yes. So every phase, so we have maps like this, Kn cross Ka1 cross so on, cross Kan is embedded as a phase into Ka1 plus, plus An. So this is a structure of an operand. So what happens in general is that uh, the arbitrary, arbitrary secondary polytope also has this type of structure. So every phase is a product of other secondary polytopes, just like here. So uh, let me call this the factor factorization property. It says that every phase of sigma of A is a product of other secondary polytopes. of other sigma of some AI. More precisely, one can describe what the faces are. So that indeed it's probably better to say, use the convex hull construction, as Maxim pointed out. Uh, yes, yes, but I, I, I'm afraid that with the third one, I'll paint myself into a corner. I won't do. I won't know what to do with it. No, yeah, no? okay. We can make any promotion. Ah, okay, okay. Maybe I'll use it later. next time. Yeah. Yes. So what really happens is that faces, faces, they correspond. Well, if vertices correspond to triangulations, that faces correspond to something in between, which is subdivision, but not necessarily into simplices. So a faces Fp correspond to, again, regular in this sense, regular polyhedral, polyhedral subdivisions. That's called P which says they represent Q as the union of uh, some subpolytops QI or something like this, for instance. So like suppose we have this point here, and this we subdivided our hexagon into three quadrilaterals. Yes, uh, to, to be completely precise, we need this plus a choice 
of a subset AI in A containing the vertices such that QI is the convex hull of AI. So strictly speaking, there is, a, uh, there is some freedom here. So, and the corresponding phase, uh, FP, is simply product of uh, sigma of AI. There is a, a particular uh, choice. So we can, for instance, ask why don't we put uh, uh, AI uh, to be QI intersected with A. We can do this, but in this way, we don't get all the faces. So and, le and let's call this the, the, the geometric faces. That's also, they're also interesting, so-called geometric faces. So any, uh, anyway, we have this kind of self-referential factor factorizing structure that every face of the polytope is a product of similar polytopes which is something like the operatic structure, but really is a little more general. And one has to uh, understand it in some other way. So now let me uh, do an e equally uh, elementary reminder about Lie algebras and L-infinity algebras. So if we have, a, I recall it, we have a G Lie, Lie algebra, then to, be, to this we associate its co-chain complex, which is exterior algebra of G, is a differential, which is a commutative DG algebra. So in more general, a Lie infinity algebra is sort of a derived, derived analog of a Lie algebra. Uh, so it's a, something like a complex. Uh, yeah, co uh, co uh, co yes, yes, dual, 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 yes, of course, of course. Yes, yes. Yeah, with a differential and with, with a bracketing, which is only satisfies Jacobi identity up to the next bracketing. So there is a differential D, which we consider as operation of order one. We have bracketing from G tensor G to G, which consider operation of order two, but uh, Jacobi up to third, uh, up to Jacobi up to lambda 3 from g cube to g and so on. And this is encoded, again, as very familiar, uh, by differential in the symmetric algebra of the dual space to g and shifted by 1. And some differential, let's call it d, satisfying that d square equals 0. So one identity, d square equals zero, uh, it contains in itself, contains the fact that this is zero, that the Jacobiator of this is the boundary of this. Minus, minus, minus one. Uh, minus one. Oh, no, that, I, that actually I, I could never remember, yes. <laughs> so, so, so it goes, for instance, if you uh, look into this, g star goes into, well, first of all is g star of minus one, that's the differential, that is lambda one. It goes to S2 of G star of minus one, which is in, in the more familiar notation, it's sort of lambda two of, of G star, shifted by minus two. So that's the, bracket, that's the dual to the bracket. So then the next would be lambda three, and so on. So from this point of view, uh, this one condition is a sequence of uh, this re re recursive conditions going forever. And it includes, it, it contains the Jacobi identity. Uh, do you have a strong reason for setting lambda zero to zero? What is lambda zero? Is the curvature? The, it would be. No, yeah, but it would, but also it's the constant term in D. Okay. Mm. I, uh, so, so in those applications, this so far was not necessary, but maybe later. That's the answer to my question. Yes, maybe later it, it, it will be. Okay, so now if I do a permutation, I do a permutation, so this goes up. 
and the two of those go down. So this is a permutation. Okay. So now let me go to the part three to combine those two observations. And let me call it the chain complex, chain complexes of the secondary polytope chain. Or let's, let's say of secondary polytopes in general. So we, I keep this notation. If I have any po convex polytope whatsoever, any. Well, uh, well, let's consider the most naive cellu cellular ch chain complex called C of P. So it's just uh, the dimensions of the chains, of the I chains, is the number of faces. So is it, I can write it like this, direct sum over F being faces. And here, well, strictly speaking, uh, the corresponding sum is not the, is this orientation space. So I work, so let's say we work over a field K. So here we have orientation space of F and simply shift by dimension of F. Orientation space. You notice F and F capital and yes, over all faces. Yes, all faces, which is just the most naive thing that is studied in the elementary courses of uh, combinatorial topology. Right? And it's, so, so this means in degree minus the dimension of F. So and the, in, in here, of course, the differential squ squared equals zero. Right? So now let's apply this to the secondary polytope and apply the information about the structure of faces. So apply to P equals sigma of A. So then, so what really happens is that the differential takes a face into sum of all of its subfaces of code dimension one. But subfaces are products of other secondary polytopes. So we have some kind of multiplicative structure. So it, it looks like a differential in an algebra. So, and let's do this. So let's form a vector space V to be direct sum over all uh, A prime of those subspaces V A prime. And this is simply V I prime is simply this. It's or it is orientation of sigma of A prime shifted by dimension. Huh? No, no, yes, otherwise it sort of collapses, yes, cardinality of A prime. D plus A, yeah. So this is a vector space. And let's form a symmetric algebra of this vector space. So form the symmetric algebra. So, and with this operation, call it dot. So, uh, so my claim is that the factorization property of the secondary polytopes implies that this algebra acquires a differential, an algebra differential, satisfying d square equals zero. So let me first state that it's a claim, the factorization property. gives a canonical differential, algebra differential in symmetric algebra of V satisfying a differential D satisfying D square equals zero. 
So basically, it, it is uh, unraveling of this definitions. Uh, let me explain what happens on generators. You mean uh, derivation, which? Yes, yes, it means satisfying the Leibniz rule. Yes, yes. So uh, as, as usual, s such a d d derivation it can be described on generators. So maybe I'll do it here. On generator, say, V a prime. And here I'm going to use the chain complex of the secondary polyhedron of, of, of a prime. So use chain complex of a prime. Okay, who is who? I'm just say, forgetting the case. We keep saying the letters. I keep forget, forgetting who is who. Ah, OK. So, uh, so, so sigma of a prime is the secondary polytope. V is, is, is just one dimensional space which associated to this. The summand, the summand in the chain complex. So I want, I want sort of to combine them all together. So the ch chain complex of individual polytope is a finite dimensional thing. But because of the kind of regularity present in this factorization property, they can be combined together into differential and infinite dimensional algebra. So the algebra itself is infinite dimensional. Yeah, so it'll be fi finitely generated. No? So, so we use the chain complex of the secondary polytope. So look at faces of sigma of a prime. They correspond to subdivisions, fp prime subdivisions, yeah, into some, let's say, q second i, a second i. So what happens is this, the, the, the part of the differential of the chain complex of the secondary polytope goes into from V i, V a prime, to the symmetric, uh, symmetric product of V a second i. So in this, and, and this we, we, we take this, take differential on V a prime to be sum of those for all faces of co-dimension one. Sum of this for all co-dimension one faces. So we sort of patch together. For every generator, we consider its own secondary polytope and use a piece of its chain complex. And then because in the setting, it is clear that d square equals 0 just because for every polytope, uh, d square equals 0. So now, uh, equivalently, it means that just from nothing, just from a bunch of secondary polytopes, we produced a Lie infinity algebra. Uh, no, 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 no. Okay, this goes here. This goes here. Yes. So what we have, we have a differential in the symmetric algebra of a vector space, which means that appropriately dual and shifted vector space becomes a Lie infinity algebra. So equivalently, let's call this vector space G. It is the dual space to my space of generators right there, V star shifted by 1. Again, it's a direct sum over subsets A prime in A, cardinality of A prime greater than D plus 1. And here's, here I have the orientation space. It can be du dualized, not dualized. It's identified with its dual. Here I write minus 1, minus dimension, sigma of a prime. So is a Lie infinity algebra. If one that was by minus 1. Oh, okay, 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 yes, 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 you're right. No, could never. 
So just from nothing, we had produced certain Lie infinity algebra. And we sort of can understand by, by looking at what happens here, what are phases of codimension one, what is the nature of operations in this Lie infinity algebra. So lambda n, the nth n linear operation, is ap approximately operation of gluing together, is the operation of gluing together. n uh, sub polytops, sub polytops, in a subdivision corresponding to a phase of core dimension one. In and let's call this in a coarse subdivision. So if triangulations are vertices and fa arbitrary phases are subdivisions, that phases of codimension one are sort of minimal, minimal subdivisions, uh, which cannot, you cannot do less than, less than that. And let's call them cores. So what are uh, examples of this? So for instance, uh, uh, if we dissect our polytop into two parts, by the by hyperplane into A and B. Then it, it gives me the binary bracket, which simply says that A B is the whole thing. Absolutely. Do you have lambda one as well? Lambda one is a differential. Uh, so so a, a priori in this setting we would have it, it would correspond to a subdivision which are differential of this. Uh, it would be sum over inserting of all the internal points. Yes, uh, a priori, th th there will be a differential here. Yes. Again, the, if we restrict to geometric faces where this freedom is removed, then the differential will be zero. So, but it is not, uh, this is by no means uh, the only operation. So for instance, it will be example number one. Example number two, if you subdivide something like this. If there is like three parts, A, B, C, and C, then the lambda three of A, B, C would be the whole thing. And in general, in higher dimensions, there are many more possibilities for doing this. So there exist more examples. So it's sort of geometric, uh, uh, geometric way of gluing together, geometric way of formulating gluing together polytops. Algebraic, yes, algebraic, yes. <laughs> gluing together is geometric, and this is algebraic, yes. Right. Or any linearization, yeah, Yes, maybe, yeah, no, I can say this too. Yeah. So uh, let me just say that this Lie infinity algebra is nilpotent because clearly there is a limit on how far we can go. It's a nilpotent Lie infinity algebra. So let me now describe a, a version of this. Once we sort of get into the hang of this construction, then we can think, okay, so now we took chain complex, let's take chain complex with coefficients. There are not only homology with constant coefficients, there are homology with coefficients in the sheaf. So how we construct something where coefficients will be present? And let me, this actually is an interesting question. So let me explain this in the most the case will be most interesting for us is the case of two dimensions. Let me call this part, part versions with coefficients. Version with coefficients. In two dimensions. So then uh, a, a good sort of setting would be like this, that for every uh, point, uh, of our configuration, there will be an algebra for every, let me call them I, point in I, or, or a DG algebra associative, associative algebra, let's call it SI. 
differential graded. Uh, so for instance, if just a base field, it's OK. You know, for every pair of indices, it may or may not be commutative, but we don't require this. Uh, a bimodal. And ij. So by model over si, left over si, right over sj. Such that uh, nji, so we assume this is a projective, projective over, over the te tensor product, si tensor sj op. So, so j j just if you, if I forget a differential. So, so it's something that uh, we can always do this up to homotopy, just for simplicity, OK? And I would want to assume self-duality in the following form. And ji equals nij star. But I have to explain what it is nij star. It would be home. Uh, well, we can say home over this uh, dual over this space, over si tensor sj op from nij to si. SJ up. Then, uh, so this would be a system of coefficients. Then, for every sub polygon, we have, say, Q prime. Q prime on vertices in our set. We can form, uh, let's say, Q prime A prime. A prime as the set of vertices. Well, and uh, we can form the cyclic tensor product, and uh, Q prime. Well, let me first write a cyclic tensor product, which means that we have vertices over the polygon going uh, around the circle, say, I0, I1, I2, In. So we tensor, uh, tensor multiply this bimodal with this bimodal over this ring, and this bimodal with this bimodal over this ring, and we can go all the way together. So they're sort of holding hands together, and the result would be just a vector space. So let me draw this picture here. Cyclic center pro product. If they were in alternation, yeah, then they could do, we don't need social duality, right? Yes. Yes. So, so, so the, the, this is somehow set up in, in a symmetric way. Yes. So we just write n i0 i1 tensor over s i1 n. I1, I2 will be tensor over S, I2, and I2, I3. And we can, in principle, we can go all the way around. Uh, so then, uh, if, a, if a polygon is subdivided into a bunch of other polygons, then uh, maybe I'll draw this here. So if, if a sub polytop Q prime is subdivided into some Q second nu, let me just consider a case of subdivision into um, maybe something like this. So then we read this one counterclockwise, and we read this one counterclockwise. So and this edge here, for instance, this is i and j. So here in the tensor product, product there will be n i j, and here will be n j i. Yeah, and we pair them together using using this pairing appropriately. So we get a map gamma from tensor product of uh, n q prime nu to n to n q prime. And this uh, is sort of associative in the sense that if it's subdivide further, it will be uh, composable. So in this way, uh, what we get, we get a system of sheaves, which are on each uh, secondary polytop, we have a cellular sheaf, a sheaf which is constant on every face. But the, some vector spaces, those vector spaces are associated to, to, to faces. And the system of those sheaves will be factorizable, again, in, the, in that sense. So. Uh, let me maybe do this here. Uh, let me do it here. This picture forces that you want to mention too. Uh, well, so so I, 
it, it doesn't. F to, 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 in order to get to higher dimensions, we should speak not about Lie algebras or associative algebras, but we should speak about appropriate structure of E and E D algebras. So this is a natural context here. Maybe at the end, I'll say a few words. So how much time do I still have? So we have those maps. Th uh, uh, those generalization maps, and they give, so this gamma, the, the gammas give, uh, give rise to a factorizing system of sheaves of sheaves on the sigma of A prime. Which means that if I have a face of this secondary polytope, it's a product. And the restriction of the corresponding sheaf to this face would be the external tensor product of those sheaves. And this, again, by the same formalism, give rise to G, an algebra which now will depend on this data. Let me call this data just by one, n. It's called Gn. Would be direct sum over A prime. Here I simply say n a prime tensor or sigma of a prime. So this is a complex, right? Minus d sigma of a prime minus one. Again, is a nilpotent L infinity algebra. So now uh, let me explain the motivation for. Uh, for considering this in the which uses this uh, words, those words of algebra of the infrared. Yes, I, I, I should probably s s say this too, yes. Yes, so this is a Lie algebra, this Lie infinity algebra. And uh, so inside, uh, inside will be G and geometric. It will be direct sum, not over, over those sets, but over sub polygons. And here I write N of A intersected with Q prime. This is the way to see, to, to simplify this algebra, to uh, remove the freedom of uh, considering several choices of points inside one polygon. So it's a sub infinity algebra. Sub -algebra. So let me say this part. Is. Yes, it has trivial differential. No, it's not exactly because if there's differential here, then it sort of uh, percolates. Motivation will be in the algebra of the infrared of the modern vector. So first of all, what is so why infrared in the first place? So from general physical understanding, the infrared analysis correspond to study the vacuum or different vacua. So infrared sort of equals to collection of vacua plus instantons to tunneling be, uh, between different vacua and pl plus sort of perturbation in this direction, instantons tunneling between them. So and in particular, so th this is a kind of general physical uh, principles. We are interested in what's called this landau ginzburg model, which simply means uh, for us that we have a Keller manifold X. And we have a holomorphic function on this, call it W. So the manifold is not compact. Uh, 
It's holomorphic. Let's assume it's a Morse function. Holomorphic. So then uh, it's a Keller manifold. It has a Keller form omega 1, 1, which is as well known as a Riemannian metric plus I times symplectic metric. So and the set A would be the set of W of XA is the set of critical values. So it's a subset of complex numbers. So we, uh, we mark it on the plane. So some of them lie inside the convex hull of, other, uh, of others. So W is a Morse function, a holomorphic Morse, Morse function. So the real part of W equals real Morse function. But you don't assume that being proper in some sense from back five or whatnot? Not necessarily. We can assume it, yeah, but it's not. So it, it, it can be just. just uh, Huh? Yes. Yes, but, but, but we consider sort of more, uh, in a way, more formal study of this. So, and we look at gradient flow. Gradient flow. And this is well known as the same as Hamiltonian flow. Hamiltonian flow. For imaginary part of W, imaginary part of W. And the Hamiltonian is preserved, so it means that the images of the gradient flow lines would be, uh, would be half lines like this. So, so typically, if they all have different imaginary parts, they don't, they, so they could never intersect. But if we rotate it so that they become on the same horizontal line, there may, there may be some non-trivial uh, intersection. Let me do it here. So let's write it like this. So for every i and j, so i and j would be points here. So look, look at the rotated function e to the theta ijw. Theta ij would be this angle. And we'll look at n ij to be the number of gradient trajectories of a real part of this, which goes from i to j. So they will project into uh, straight intervals. So gradient trajectory. <coughs> of real. Yes, yes, appropriate number, yes. Uh, no, no, actually, no, 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 I, I just want, uh, let's say the number, and then make a vector space out of them. OK, re uh, e to the theta ijw from critical point xi to critical point xj. And let n, big n ij, equal space spent by them with appropriate grading and floor type differential. Space spent by them. Yeah, it's the oogle, yeah, yeah. The angle, yeah. Yeah, so then this gives rise to a system of coefficients, n, which corresponds to all algebras being the field, and those nij, those nij. So in principle, one can imagine a more general situation when this is not necessarily a Morse function. So, so singularities are not necessarily Morse, not necessarily isolated. In this case, those would correspond to the Foucault-Zeidel categories of those local singularities. And this would be certain by models, which also, in principle, one can imagine such a construction. I'm not sure, probably this construction has not yet been uh, fully developed in symplectic topology. But anyway, so algebraically, one can imagine this setting. Uh, this is the motivation, and we want to study uh, this Lie Li algebra. Uh, so Lie algebra corresponding to this setting is particularly interesting from physical point of view. So corresponding. Corresponding G is important. Oh. 
Okay, so. That G will be an L infinity algebra. Yes, it will be an L infinity algebra. So now it's actually important in, in this case that for uh, in two dimensions, we can, in, in, actually in any number of dimensions, we can consider the relative setting. Which means one point at infinity. At infinity. And this uh, actually putting one point of infinity is exactly the setting when uh, Foucault's idle category is defined in symplectic topology, which has put so th 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 this move of everything into one direction. But we can consider formally the setting. We can consider that our set A has one extra point, which can be either uh, actually at the projective infinity or simply far away, something like this. So we can, can have a new set, say A tilde, which is an old set A, together with one point infinity, which is outside of everything. Then in this case, we can form the corresponding Lie infinity algebra, call it G tilde. We can do it with coefficients. We can do it without coefficients. It, and it has, so first of all, it has an ideal in the obvious sense ideal called G infinity, which uh, consists of infinite polygons, polygons of which one vertex is at infinity, equal span of, well, I use this notation VA for the generators, I can say it again, sorry, or VQ prime for Q prime contain infinity. And the subalgebra, subly infinity algebra, G. F, which is simply the algebra corresponding to this A, so G, A. And this is a direct sum of both of them. So which means there is a canonical map, say alpha, from G, F to, uh, so when we have an uh, algebra, uh, Li algebra G, G hat, which is a direct sum of a subalgebra and an ideal, it means that the subalgebra acts on the ideal. So, and in the in the L infinity situation, we will have sort of derived action. I write derived functor of derivations of G infinity. So, and so this is uh, Li algebra. Uh, the differential, have I got this right? The differential preserves GF, but it doesn't preserve G infinity. It preserves, the, the G infinity is an ideal, so it preserves even, even in more, in a bigger sense. Well, yeah, but I don't see that because I could imagine having convex subsets that don't include, include infinity. Well, if, if, if uh, have I, I've, maybe I've lost track. No, if, if, if you have something which is finite and something is the infinite, the result will be infinite. Yeah, it's Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so in, in this way, yeah. So it's a derived derivations. In particular, a maurer cartan element here, so maurer cartan give deformations of G infinity. So, but in dimension two, there is, so this can be done in any number of dimensions. But in dimension two, uh, this infinite part is really near infinity. The situation is somehow has one dimension less, and everything is ordered. Oops, I'm sorry. And everything is ordered. So. So in and d equals two situation near infinity is one dimension. So everything is ordered. So g infinity can be lifted from a Lie, uh, from a homotopy Lie algebra to a homotopy associative algebra. Let's call it a infinity algebra. 
by the rule, so, so algebra from which, by the analog of the formula, the two commuta bracket is a b minus b a. And let's call this algebra R, and it has an upper triangular structure, because what happens here is just we can combine them in the order. So, so it has upper triangular, R is upper triangular. Or using the dri more derived category language, the category of R models has a semi-orthogonal decomposition. And we have a map. We can uh, extend this to a homomorphism psi from G to the Hochschild complex of R. So it's a Hochschild. Which, again, as well known, governs deformations. So GF. G, G, GF, yes, yes, GF, yeah. So in fact, if we work with coefficients, then uh, we'll get the image, not the entire Hochschild complex, but a subcomplex which governs deformations that preserve this structure, that preserve semi-orthogonal decomposition. So let me just do one more permutation here. I'm almost done. So this psi, so psi takes values. Let's call the or in, in, in the subcomplex. Let's call it Hochschild with the arrow, which is, let's so write something like this, is the most natural thing that writes itself would be something like this, over i0 less than i1 less so on, less than in, and less than means in the, say, in the sense of that order upstairs. So we have home over s i0 star tensor s i n. Here I have r i0 i1. So this refers to this triangular structure, uh, tensor s i1 r i1 i2 tensor R I n minus 1 I n over S I n minus 1. And then in this complex, and then what we can prove is a certain universality theorem that this algebra GF is quite, the, the, the corresponding morphism is a quasi-isomorphism called the universality theorem. Sorry, home to what? You left out. Oh, oh, home, oh yeah, home to. Uh, yes, yes, to R I zero I N. Yeah. So we think of, the, of this now as a sort of category with semi-orthogonal decomposition, yes, and we try to deform it in a way that would preserve this thing so that that's what we write. Universality theorem. That the L infinity morphism, this will be an L infinity morphism, L infinity morphism. Called psi from G F to ordered Hochschild complex of R is a quasi isomorphism. It means that every deformation of uh, the, uh, 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 any uh, semi orthogonal de uh, deformation comes from a Maurer Cartan element, i.e., any deformation. Preserving semi orthogonal structure comes from a Maurer Cartan element in G finite. And then the somehow physical motivation of uh, Gayot, Amur, and Witten was to uh, 
give uh, particular examples of such elements which would recover the Foucault Zeidel category. So I try to go Coyota more with and go. So and, and here in principle there may be several approaches. It's still we're still thinking on on, on other approaches to this uh, problem to find the uh, Mauro Cartan element. We say gamma find uh, gamma recovering the Foucault Zeidel category. Of W. So anyway, so 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 so, so this gives a certain class of of Lie algebraic structures just coming from uh, basically from nothing, from secondary polytops, uh, and uh, there are interesting relations with Hochschild complexes, and in in higher number of dimensions, this should be understood in te in terms of E D and E D minus one algebras. I think it's Swiss cheese so to us. Yes, Swiss cheese. So, so, so this is so, so sort of uh, by now a, a classical uh, area of thinking. So how we think of the formations of E N algebras. So this is a version of the Lean conjecture. But anyway, so the, 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 so the structure itself is completely elementary, and this is what I wanted to present today. Thank you very much. Is this supposed to work in the case when we have uh, Landau Ginsburg model with non isolated singular? Well, so th this, uh, th this setting is sort of designed to work with this whenever the uh, symplectic people will construct corresponding categories. So, how do you see a symbol in this language? Well, a symbol is, is exactly. A, so, those lines are intersections of symbols. So, so, a gradient line from one critical point to another. But what if they are not isolated? No, that, 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 that I don't know. So in your construction of G, you neglected those sets of vertices which didn't span. And yes. Is there any way that any of them might have a role, do you think? Give, give some negative in principle, yes, but uh, I don't know. Mm. Yeah, I, I asked the physicists about that, they, they didn't know. Yeah, so it may be, so it, it, it may. It, 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 yes, it, 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 I agree, it's a little annoying that we disregard them. It would be better to not have to, have to disregard them, but to do something. Oh, so we all have the same reaction, but without knowing what, what we're meant to be, <laughs> what physics we're meant to be. Yeah. Good, okay. <laughs> In the case where on a face you could factorize the polynomial, so yeah. typically in singularities, you have a face which is a line, yeah. and in the middle of this face some element, yeah. such that the whole face polynomial becomes a square, then uh, you run in trouble. So in, in the case of a middle number goes then drastically up. Well, uh I, 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 here I'm talking about a secondary polytope, but not of the set of monomials at all. Yeah, but I, I'm still allowed to think that alphas are integral value, yeah. or, have, uh, or integers. Yes. So then I can take polynomial with two preserved pairs. No, 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 but we, we don't do this, this at all, because those Ws are not, are not monomials. They're critical values. Yes, they're complex numbers.